Well, Merry Christmas. We're so glad that you're joining us here this morning. We hope you've been able to spend some time with some loved ones, some friends, some family. Hopefully you've been able to give some gifts and have a great Christmas breakfast. But no doubt there is that group of dads who are currently driving the streets, trying to find a store open where they can buy those batteries that you thought were included in the gift that you just gave your kids. I know we've done that before. Hey. Oh yeah, yep. yeah, absolutely. Christmas afternoon, trying to make things happen, set it all up so the kids are happy, yeah. uh, the toys are all together, which is great. Church, we are so glad to be with you today and for you joining us together. And uh, we just wanna let you know a couple of quick things before we get into some worship mm -hmm. and uh, a quick message for Christmas day. Uh, but our service is coming up over the next few weeks. We'd love to see you uh, at one of them. And we have got a New Year's Eve service coming up next Saturday night for our Caloundra and Innisfail location. So keep uh, your eye out for that. That's gonna be absolutely outstanding. And also there will be no Sunday service for both the locations as well. And then the following week, will be the 8th of January, a 10 a.m. service only, then our 10 and 5 will resume on the 15th. So we'd love to see you at some of our Christmas services over that time as well. We just want to take a moment to thank everyone who's been a part of financial giving here at Empower this year. Now, over the year, we've been able to celebrate the different ways that your giving has really extended the kingdom of God and extended our vision to influence people and transform cities. And I just wanted to remind you this morning that the Bible says in Matthew 6, verse 33, to seek first the kingdom of God. Uh, and what that means in the practical is that when we seek God first with the uh, giving, the the first of our giving in our time, mm. in our talent, and in our treasure, that the other part of that verse is that God actually causes everything else to fall into place. That means that whatever has been surrendered to God, that when we seek His heart first and we live for what's important to Him, that God actually takes care of the rest. And we just know that as you continue to, to seek God first, that God is going to pour out His favour and His blessing in your life in this Christmas season. Season, but also throughout 2023. So thank you, church, for your giving this year. Now, church, we are going to enjoy some carol worship followed by a Christmas message as well. Light of the world, treasure of heaven, brilliant like the stars in the winter sky. Joy of the Father, reach through the darkness, shine across the earth, send the shadows to fight. Light of the world, from the beginning, the tragedy.
At the time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quinarius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for the census. And because Joseph was descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He travelled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee, and he took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. Luke chapter 2 verses 1 to 7. Merry Christmas everybody. It's great to have you with us this morning here on Christmas Day and we hope that you're enjoying the morning, enjoying time with family, with friends. Uh, what a great day it is to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. You know, today I really wanted to share a few moments around the fact of this great scripture that we've just heard about what it meant for Mary and Joseph. Now just think about this. Mary had an angel come visit her and God spoke to her and said, hey, I want you to give birth to the Messiah. I want you to bring the Savior of the world into this world. And you can imagine what that was like. And she said, yes. And you can imagine now in this point after nine months of you know, carrying Jesus, that it's now at this point where the, the, the whole of Israel has to have a census done. Now in those days with the census, you had to go to your husband's hometown. So wherever he was born or wherever his ancestral lines went back to, you had to go uh, back to that place. And for Mary and Joseph, what that meant is they had to travel from Galilee all the way to Bethlehem. And that is a long journey. Now you can imagine nine months pregnant, having to travel that whole way. And, uh, and so they do, they set out to head towards Bethlehem. Now here's the thing, God causes this census to happen because Jesus, the Messiah, has been prophesied to be born in Bethlehem. He wasn't meant to be born in uh, Galilee or Nazareth. He was meant to be born in Bethlehem, as we see in Micah 5.2. It prophesied this, so God was making this happen. Now, when you think, oh man, I, nine months pregnant, got to go on this massive journey now, and, and, and you know, what's going to happen? How am I, where are we going to stay? All those things are involved. Now, you think about this, when they finally get to Bethlehem, uh, they try and look for a place to stay, but everyone who has ancestral lines back to that place is staying there as well. So there's no room at the inn, uh, there's no beds anywhere. So all that is left is a stable. All that is left. Now in ancient times, in ancient Israel, a stable or where you kept the animals was kind of a hollowed out cave. And you can think about the fact that in this uh, place is now where Mary and Joseph were not, not only going to rest their heads for the night, but they're going to have a baby in this place. And they go in there where the animals are and, and come into that place to uh, really bring the Savior of the world into this space. And I just think about this for a moment. I think about, you know, we've had some um, ladies who had babies in the last few weeks across our two churches. And it's just incredible. If you think about it, what if those ladies uh, had to go back to their husband's hometown to give birth to, to their children? And then they get there and there's no hospital beds. There's nowhere to stay. They got to be in a backyard shed with the animals. Now, I reckon those ladies would have had something to say about that. That's for sure. But here we have it. And the whole point to this is, is that we don't focus on the journey, we focus on the miracle. And God was about to do an incredible miracle in this moment. Now I think about this, when it comes to the journey that Mary and Joseph went on and coming to this point of being born in a stable, in a, an animal uh, space as well, it just goes to show the incredible point of the fact that Jesus was born into absolute humility. Now, he wasn't born in Herod's palace. He wasn't born in some rich nobleman's house, you know, in Jerusalem. He was born in Bethlehem in an animal stable. And you think about this, in the most humblest of things, he was brought into the world. And it makes me think about Philippians 2, 
um, that, that shares about the fact that Jesus was brought, uh, he was in the highest of highs and he was brought uh, in the most humble place. He came as a bond servant into our world because uh, he wasn't there to come in into the most wealthiest or the most highest esteemed places. He came in the lowest of places. Why? Because he wanted to come and be the savior of the world, a world that had been so fractured and so disconnected from God. And we look at this is that God created this world and because of sin entering this world, you know, what happened was is that mankind and all of creation was fractured from the relationship with God. And you know, God's heart is so strong and so loving that God's intention was to bring that redemption back to His people again, to allow a way for people to have relationship with God again. And the only way that was going to happen is God doing that Himself. And that's the point of the Savior. That's the point of Jesus, the Son of God, coming into this world. It was, it was for John 3.16, for God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This was the point of Jesus coming. He came it with absolute humility, but He came out of the love of God to redeem this world back to Himself again. Now here we have it, Jesus being born in this very most humblest of places in a stable. And we think about our lives, you know, throughout this year. Maybe you've had some amazing moments throughout this year, which you can glorify and thank God for. But maybe there's some that have had some challenging moments this year. And we want to let you know right now, just like Mary and Joseph, in this moment of their lives, they didn't focus on the journey but they focused on the miracle. And I want to encourage you, whether there's been challenges in your family, whether there's been challenges with your business or, or in any uh, thing or area of your life, I want to let you know there's no challenge that's greater than Jesus. There's no situation that God cannot get you through because like Mary and Joseph, we don't focus on the journey, we focus on the miracle. And I want you to know today is that God is not finished with you, with your life. He has such a great plan, such a great future for your life. And, and even though it may have had some challenging moments in your life, hey, keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on the Savior and who He is because it's the journey may be walking through some valleys, but oh man, there's some mountaintop moments coming because that is what Jesus has in store for our future. It is full of hope. It's full of life. It's full of blessings. That's what He has for us. And this is why Jesus came into the world. This is why He was born uh, into this world uh, to grow up, to become a man so that he could die at the cross for our sins, be raised again three days later, all so that he could pay the price for the fracture, the mess, the sin of all of humanity and be that answer for us. Now through Jesus, we have life. We have hope, life that can fill us to the full inside of us through Christ when we accept Him into our lives. And today, we thank Jesus. We thank God for sending Him into this world to be the answer so that we could have relationship with God again. Today is such a beautiful and incredible day where we glorify God for all that He has done for us. And we, we are reminded to say, Oh Lord, You loved us so much that You sent Your Son to be born into this world into humility, but to die at a cross and rise from the dead so that we could have a relationship with God again. What an amazing God we serve. And we love Him so much for it. And we're thankful for it on Christmas Day. And I want to ask today if there is anyone that has joined us online, wherever you are in your homes, I want to ask you if you do not know Jesus today, I'm going to pray a prayer right now. And I'd love for you to pray it with me today to accept Jesus into your life. Maybe you've never known that relationship with God. And I want to encourage you today to pray this with me so that you can know Jesus filling your life with His life today as well. So let's pray. And as I pray, just repeat the words after me. Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin and my past. I accept you today as my Savior and my Lord from this day forward. 
I'm born again into your kingdom. Amen. I just want to congratulate anyone today. If you did pray that prayer for the first time, you have prayed the greatest prayer you can ever pray to accept Jesus into your life. Now, I'd love to pray for all of us across our churches and pray for blessing over this Christmas season and for 2023 as well. So, Father God, we thank you uh, for this Christmas season, Christmas Day, New Year's coming up. I pray for your blessing on every family, on every life today. And Lord, you would just pour out your favor. You would pour out your blessing. You would pour out your prosperity on each and every life today. And God, we speak into 2023 and we declare it's going to be our best year yet. Thank you, Lord, for 2023. I thank you that, God, your hand of blessing will be upon every life, every family, every person in our churches. And God, I pray for our best year coming in front of us. Lord, all the promises of God in 2 Corinthians 1.20 are yes and amen. And we agree with you today, Jesus, and we pray for an incredible year in front of us. We look forward, Father to the testimonies that are going to come from right across our churches. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, bless your church. We love you so much. And we pray that you have an incredible Christmas day. Well, we hope that you were encouraged to the word today. And uh, if you did pray that prayer for the first time or you made a decision to know God, hey, we'd love to support you in your journey. Would you let us know about the decision that you made through the Connect card online? You can see it and follow the link on the screen right now. That will help us to get some resources to you to help make sense of what that decision means for your life. So great to have you join us today on Christmas Day for our Church at Home service. And we pray you have an incredible day with family and friends. Love to see you at a service coming up. Merry Christmas, everybody.